you got to stop. Enough with the excuses. You don't have enough time. You don't have enough money. Keep going on. I've heard them. And today's podcast episode, guess what? We're going to break them because your thoughts lead to your feelings. Your feelings lead to your actions and your actions lead to your results. Let's get you good results. Dive in, smash those excuses and get you going just in time for fourth quarter holiday sales that are creeping up on us. And I want you to maximize it. All right, let's dive in. Friends, welcome to today's podcast episode where today I'm actually going to brag on some students. And the reason why I wanted to do, to do this with episode bum, 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 101, yes, we're in the triple digits now and it feels so good. Triple digits with podcasting. Yes, we did it. We did it. Um, and the reason why I wanted to brag on these students is because I think you may have similar excuses to what they had before they started. Uh, or even before they exploded their online business. So what I want to do, I wanted to make this episode super special. And I wanted to go back and talk about some of the guests that I've had on the Because I Can podcast and dive into the excuse they had before they got started and break it down. Because if you're not where you hope to be in your business at this point, well, then let's think about it. What is the thing in your brain right now, the excuse, the stopping point, that's producing the results that you're getting. I want to dive into that today and see if we can break through those. And this is going to be such a fun, super fun episode, being able to go back and celebrate those who have made things happen and give you inspiration, hope, and tools to be able to use so that you can move forward. Okay. Then at the end, I usually do my top 10 takeaway, but I kind of sound a little bit weird as I was trying to do my top 10 takeaway around this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to give you a little synopsis of where my family's at right now. Um, my mom may be the only one in this episode that gets all the way to the end, but that's okay. I'm going to still do it. Why? Because I can, you can find out what's happening with goose and Davis and our homeschool ing adventures. <laughs> now we're going to do that. So I'll reserve that to the end of today's podcast. So let's dive in. And I want to talk about a number one excuse that comes along with people that want to build their business. Like, Allison, I want to build my business, but guess what? I don't have any money. Well, I think that excuse comes up all of the time and I get it. I remember back when I didn't have any money. I remember being queen of coupons, trying to save every little single penny. And so being able to think I could even invest in a product didn't make sense in my mind. Like I literally couldn't do it, but I think we go back and let's take a look at episode number 88 where Trish Gower comes in and talks about how she started her business. She didn't go out and buy a whole bunch of products. She actually was using stuff that was in her house and it was from a leftover um, school fundraiser and there were products left over. She didn't know what to do with them. She ended up with them at her home and she used that. It was wax. They, I guess they were making candles. You can go listen to that episode making wax. She put it up online and then she sold it. And that gave her enough money, enough capital to be able to launch her brand and she just posted last week that she is crushing it. She's selling thousands of orders every single month. And she was able to break through the excuse of I don't have enough money to just being resourceful. What do you have laying around your house that you could sell to bring in income? Do you have some stuff from left over from an MLM? Do you have random wax like Trish did? Or maybe you don't. Maybe you just moved. What about going to a secondhand store? and reselling that stuff. That brings us to Christina. Uh, she lives down, she's my neighbor down in Puerto Rico, and she actually goes to the local secondhand store. And guess what? She worked out a deal with them and said, I'll buy 20 products from you for $20. She turned around, sells it on eBay, and she's done over $50,000 in sales from the local, hand, the lo local secondhand store in Puerto Rico. Friends, it's not about having lots of money to start a business. It's about being resourceful with what we have today. I started my first business, my first online store with stuff headed to the trash. So let's break that excuse down uh, by not having enough money, by being resourceful and using what we already have. There's so many places we can sell it now. KSL, if you're in Utah, 
There's Facebook marketplaces. There's a whole bunch of places that you can start getting that money coming in. So let's squash that excuse right away. Okay. Now talking about Christina, um, and I'm going to bring in Ellie from episode number nine. They both live off the main land. So I'll have people say, Allison, I want to do this, but I live in Puerto Rico or I live in Hawaii or I live in the UK. Can I still do e-commerce? Well, go listen to episode number nine. Yes, that's a clear rollback into how I'm able to ship products while I'm on an island with Christina as my neighbor, shipping things from an island. And then we actually have a podcast coming up with Ellie who lives in the UK and she is crushing it over there. That podcast episode is coming up soon about how to break the barriers of being somewhere else as your excuse and not being able to make it happen. We're going back to Puerto Rico. And guess what? I'm still getting my products shipped out. We sell journals. We sell necklaces. We sell t-shirts. We sell a whole bunch of stuff and it's not going to skip a beat. So there are ways to do it. Dive in to episode number nine. Okay, then let's dive into the, you know what? I really don't want to be on social media all day long and I need a social media account to grow my business. Go back and listen to episode number 79 with Alexis. She talks about how she built her first 50 grand with zero social media. It works. How do I know it works? It's because I did it too. I had a pillows business that we did multiple millions of dollars and my name wasn't anywhere on any of the marketing, on any of the pictures, nothing. I didn't need it to be. I didn't want it to be. And so if the excuse of, oh my gosh, I got to put my face out there is the thing that's stopping you, we've got proof. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. Go over and look at YouTube where they do the unboxing uh, YouTube videos. They built a multi, multi million dollar business and all they show is hands. Maybe have your branding be your just your hands or your neighbor's hands, or maybe you have your neighbor even do it for you and be the face of your company. You do not have to have your face as your brand in e-commerce, which is pretty magical for the people who just don't want to be on camera or are introverted and really are scared to death to do it, which leads me to number 61, episode number 61 with Ruth. Ruth wanted to be on camera. She wanted to be the face of her brand, but she felt that she looked too different. She felt that she didn't fit in to the norms of social media. And guess what? She fell into that trap and she hired models to fit in the norm. And what happened to her cells? They tanked. When she stepped into who she is, who God made her be for a specific purpose, her cells took off. She'll hop on a live and do over a thousand dollars in cells. She wants to be the face of her brand. She is craving to do this and her customers are responding. And so it's so fun to hear people that want to be the face of their brand, don't want to be the face of their brand. Guess what? You can do it in e-commerce. So that excuse that's getting you, uh, you want to be, or you don't want to be, let's smash that one right now. Cause there are ways to go about it. Be you be you if you're going to be on camera. Okay, let's go into the next one. Let's dive into episode number 82. 82 is Katie Evans. She didn't know what she wanted to sell. She started in lingerie and it felt off. It didn't feel like that was the thing for her. She kept hitting blocks and just like, okay, this isn't working. This isn't working. This isn't working. And then she decided to try something else and then try something else and then try something else. And that led her to her beautiful brand now. And you can go check it out. Hive and Home, it is exploding. She's literally shipping out thousands and thousands of orders every single week. They've had to expand their warehouse to to be able to hold more and more. But she felt in alignment with the thing that she is selling now, which are candles and dough bowls. And the only way that she knew what she was going to start selling and be really good at and she had to start. She had to start with something. She chose lingerie and she said, that's not working. And so she went to another thing and then went to another thing and then went to another thing. You moving forward is going to create clarity. I think so many people get in their head. All right. If I'm going to sell lingerie on day one, I have to be selling it in 10 years. No, you don't. The thing you sell today does not have to determine who you will be in a year from now, in five years from now. My very first thing I sold was leftover vinyl headed to the trash can. I'm so glad that I don't sell vinyl now. Why? Because I'm not passionate about that. 
right? I just wanted to create clarity. And the way to do that is take what I had and start moving forward. Isn't that so cool how it works? I know it's pretty magical. We've got the resources right here where we're at, no matter where you live. I was talking to another gal the other day um, and she's still trying to figure out what she wants to create. She's literally selling twigs. (laughs) And if you're like twig, yeah, like sticks, they're selling, they're selling. And another one, they're taking uh, like a, a, a bigger stick and they're chopping it into blocks and then they're selling slices of wood. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And then go look at like anthropology uh, and some of these other big pottery barn. They're selling them, but for way, way expensive, right? Things sell. People want stuff. I live in Puerto Rico. For me to get pine cones is impossible. So what did I do? I wanted pine cones over Thanksgiving. What did I do? I had to order them from someone. Someone went and found pine cones for me and shipped them to me. I was happily happy to pay them for pine cones because I can't get any pine cones in Puerto Rico. And it was kind of funny because my husband's like, we have so many pine cones in Utah. I know. I didn't have in Puerto Rico. <laughs> okay, so next one. Wait, let's go back to that one. So crushing that you don't know what to sell. Just start. Start moving forward and create that clarity. Choose a product. If you are still thinking, I can't choose a product, I can't choose a product. Okay. Knock it off. <laughs> and you know what? As I'm saying this, okay, choose a product. And then starting in September, um, oh, we're in September. Oh my gosh. Time is going so fast. Uh, the 20th, around the 20th, you go to uh, findyourperfectproduct.com. I'm going to be doing a five-day sprint to help you to find that perfect product to sell and help you to know how to sell it. Like, what do you do to be able to take a stick of wood? Like, if you just go out and say, here, buy this stick of wood, nobody's going to buy it. There is a way to do it. You can join me in that free five-day sprint, finding your perfect product to sell online. Um, I didn't mean for that to be a little plug for that (laughs) in this podcast episode, but it actually just worked out really, really well. So if you're struggling, guess what? I got you. Let's do it. I'm going to be there live. I'm going to be there live, staring at you, making it happen. Let's get your homework done. It's going to be good. going to be good stuff. Okay. So let's dive into the next thing where you don't have enough time. Raise your hand high in the sky. If you don't feel like you have enough time. Okay. Katie Oliver, episode number 16. She was a full-time school teacher, full-time school teacher. She created a multiple million dollar business, not during the summer, but during the crazy time of school, October, November, December. Three, three and a half months out of the year, she created a multiple million dollar business while she was a full-time school teacher. You don't have enough time I don't think it's the time that's the issue. I think it's the managing of the time that's an issue. If you want a free planner, guess what? I'm here to help you. I got a free planner for you because I can life.com forward slash planner. This planner saved my tush. When I was running all eight businesses, I had to figure out something to be able to manage my time so that life didn't manage me. I needed to be able to take control of it out there. You can get a free planner. You got time. Just manage it. Okay. Katie did it. So, so good. Another one, Ronisa Clark, episode number 41. She was working full time <laughs> and she's crossed well beyond the six figure mark. And she actually uh, was trying to pay off her student loans. And she was like, okay, I could go get another job or I could start a business to help pay off my student loans. And guess what? She did it. Full time job need to pay off her student loans. And she's moving forward, making those payments without being so incredibly strapped. She's a beautiful, profitable, amazing business. And in episode number 41, we dive into it. Don't let time stop you from starting a business. It will give you more time in the future. It allows you to create a schedule that you love. It allows you to say, you know what? I'm kind of tired today. I'm going to go take a nap. You don't have to check with the boss. Or if you fall asleep at work, that's not going to be good. (laughs) So starting your business can help you to create that freedom in your schedule of going to see your kid's basketball game, of going to see your kid in a kindergarten play or whatever, going to visit your grandma in the assisted living facility. We were meant to enjoy life. We were meant to live a wonderful, beautiful life. And if we're at a dead end job that we hate nine to five with a crabby boss, 
we're done. Like, no, no, you have options. You have options and you can do this in the time when your kids are asleep. When Michaela and Bridges started their business when they were 10 and 13, they just worked Tuesday nights and Saturday mornings. That's what they gave. And they were able to build their six-figure business. You don't have to go bonsai crazy and work full-time in your business. Sure, you put more time in, you're going to grow a lot bigger. But if you don't, there's still ways. There's still options for you. Okay, let's dive into this next one. Jody Bittner and her mom, Janine Toon. Hey, you guys, I'm in a podcast episode. Real life, guys. Real life. I'm at home. My kids are yelling in the background. <laughs> okay, Jody and Janine. I don't have a podcast episode on them yet. I'm going to leave that as a yet. We'll see if we can get them on. And Jody, she was so afraid it was going to take too long to grow their business. Well, look at this. Look at look at what they did. They posted this in the Zero to 100K Facebook group, the Facebook group that's private for those that are ready to step in and make their first six figures. This is Zero to 100K. They live there because they can life. And I get to add that additional support in there. And Jody wrote, it took her 18 months to sell her first 10K. Her second 10K was nine months. She cut the time in half. And then her third 10K was in two months, my friends, two months. She went from 18 down to nine, down to two. You can compound the money. Sure, in the beginning, it takes time because you're learning the process of how to do it. You're building new thoughts. You're fighting back insecurities and self-doubt. Guess what? That's the process. And when you can get through it, then the next time it's easier. And the next time it's easier. And the next time it's easier. Like literally, that's how it works. Think about the last time you sat down to play a piano song. The first time you're like, I don't even know what those black black dots are. What do I do with them? Someone teaches you how to do it. And then you start playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. And it's really clumsy and clunky. And then after a couple weeks, you start to get the rhythm. And then it goes smoother. Learning, it's a process. It's not, you flip on the light switch. Nope. You got to learn how to do it. And if you're not in the zero to hundred K system, guess what? It's okay. You can, (laughs) and you can also get in another group. If it's not my group, get in another group. So you don't have to do this alone. So you don't have to say, oh my gosh, I'm so slow. No, everybody's at their own pace. Everybody goes at a different path. The one that's meant for them. You need to be in a supportive group. Don't do business on your own. No. No, don't do business on your own. You don't need to. And you know, I was thinking about this the other day about doing business on your own. And uh, someone was saying, oh, it's lonely at the top. Why does it have to be lonely at the top, right? Like think about when you go to, if you went to Disneyland by yourself, okay? It's not gonna be that fun, right? Disneyland by yourself, so not fun. You go to Disneyland with someone else and you are there and you get to experience how they are feeling, how they're reacting. You talk about, oh my gosh, did you get so dizzy? Oh my gosh, did you have so much fun? Like that's the beauty of doing something together. As you're growing your business, same thing. Don't do it alone. It's not as fun. Bring in something. I have Julie Porter, who I absolutely love that I love celebrating with. And she is my EA. She's like, oh, I don't ever want to run a business without her. I got Jared to celebrate with. There's so many people that I can celebrate with. Don't do this alone. You don't have to do this business alone. Okay. Another one, ED Wagstaff coming in. You guys, she was feeling like a failure. An absolute, like, I can't do this anymore. I'm not made for this. And you know what? I think she was being tested because that very next day, she let me know that she had sold 996 orders. I wonder if that was a little bit of God's glitter right there to keep her going crazy, right? The moment you think about quitting, maybe that's the moment that you're truly being tested to see if you really want it. I don't know. Happened to me so many times, so many times. I call it God's glitter because I feel like when I'm so frustrated and I'm so down and I'm, I'm like, I just have that frustration in me. I feel like if I can just take a deep breath and just look, God's showing me glitter. Like you can keep doing this, Allison. You can keep doing this. This is the direction that you're supposed to go. Sometimes that'll come in in the form of an email. Sometimes it'll come in the form of a direct message. Sometimes it's an order that is made. If I can look for those things, that gives me the hope and the strength to keep moving on. Take a second and look for that. God's glitter right there. 
Uh, okay. I have so many others, so many others that have gone and been so fearful and had excuses after excuse after excuse, but they set it aside so that they could move forward and step into who they were meant to be. That's going to help them to grow into becoming better and better who God wants that made them to be, to be able to serve the people they needed to. If you've got an excuse Write it down. Call it out. What is the thing that is stopping you? Don't let that define you. Start switching it. If you're like, I'm too old to learn anything, that's an excuse. We got plenty of testimonials, plenty of examples of people that are grandmas and grandpas, and they are crushing their businesses because they turn the thoughts instead of saying, I'm too old to, you know what? I can learn this. I can learn this at my pace. We've got people in there that think they're too young to start. We turn it to, guess what? You can still learn this. You can still learn this. So start taking your excuse and start turning it. Can you turn it into a because I can statement? Instead of saying, you know what? It's going to take me too long. Like Jody uh, had. What about turning it to say, you know what? It's going to take me some time to do it. Why? Because I can. Because I can take the time to be able to build that business, to be able to learn new things. What about Ruth taking her, I look different. I'm not like everyone else to say, you know what? I am different. And that's the beautiful part of me. Why? Because I can, I can get out there and I can influence people and I can help them to feel really, really good. She sells clothing. No way. She sells confidence and delivers clothing. Clothing is the thing that they actually open up in the mail, but she delivers or she sells. She talks about the confidence that they're going to feel when they have these clothes, these clothes on. It's such a good episode, such a good episode in every single business story, all the episodes that we have recorded a hundred of them, 101 and all the guests that I've brought in, there's an excuse in every single person that started and they had to figure out a way to start switching those thoughts, start turning those thoughts in their head instead of, I can't. And then it's an excuse to, well, maybe why can I do this? Because I can. Okay. How can I do this? Cause I'm going to give myself time. It's okay. I don't have to be perfect. They're turning those thoughts slowly in their head. They're starting knowing that the thing that they do today doesn't determine who they are tomorrow moving forward, creating that clarity and not making the excuse define them. Call your excuse out, set it aside. Let's move forward. There's so much opportunity for you. And I want you to be able to have that income to come in for you to be able to live your dream life. Because guess what? Our dreams, friends, they cost money. So let's get you that money. E-commerce is exploding. There's a fly in here that's attacking me. E-commerce is exploding right now. We're going into fourth quarter, my friends. Holiday sales. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. Sun is starting to shine in my eyes. Okay, so that's today's podcast episode. And now, as promised, I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on in the family land. And uh, if everybody left, that's okay. Um, hi, mom. Hopefully, you're still on at this point. <laughs> so right now, I'm recording in Utah. We actually leave in oh, a little over 24 hours to head back to Puerto Rico which we're super excited to do. Uh, Goose is ready. We've been training him to be able to ride on the airplane ride again uh, and just getting things settled and, and squared away. When this podcast episode is live, uh, it's got to go to my editor after I record. Um, that will be the day that we're actually closing Next Level. Yeah, Next Level has been uh, such a highlight of um, my teaching. And that's where uh, people will be able to come in and we do, um, there's some one-on-one -on -one components of helping them to be able to grow their e-commerce business. Um, we've had over, oh, I think we're close to 400 students total that have, that have graduated that program. Um, and you've actually heard a lot of them on the podcast episodes uh, because they have learned and they've grown and it's been so fun to be a part to be part of their journey. So that's super fun. So we'll be closing that uh, tonight at midnight. Uh, and then uh, on the 20th, so we're actually going to open it a little bit early. Um, we're going to do, I talked about earlier that uh, findyourperfectproduct.com. I wasn't going to because I'd, 
I, I I'm trying to balance. We're going into homeschool, right? We're we're moving back to Puerto Rico. We got a lot of things going on just in our home life, and um, I was hesitant to do uh, another uh, sprint. We it's a five day sprint. I come on, I teach you live. We have coaches. We have um, just extra support to help those who need help finding that perfect product and finding confidence to be able to find that perfect product. And we pour our heart and our soul into it. And it takes a lot of energy and I love it so much, but because it takes so much energy, I really have to plan for it. Uh, And I was a little hesitant to do it, but I keep looking at numbers and I keep seeing what's happening in the e-commerce world. I'm actually seeing the big wigs out there that have been doing a lot of the info product actually starting and launching their e-commerce businesses right now. I was asked by um, a couple, like one of them, Russell Brunson to come in and talk about e-commerce and the impact that e-commerce is having on people's finances. Not only are they financially like doing amazing, but they're also impacting so many lives right now. And our, let's say the world is a little bit hurt, a little bit broken right now. And they're able to take their messaging and help their products be able to help people get through some really, really hard times. And so I've had the opportunity to teach um, big uh, communities and I, my heart just keeps saying, Allison, you got to do it again. So I am, I'm going to show up, findyourperfectproduct.com. We'll have a Facebook group party beforehand. And then on the 20th, I'm going to go live with you for five days to help you to find your perfect product to sell online to prepare you for what I believe will be the biggest selling season in the history. We're walking into 2021. We saw it happen in 2020, like 40% increase. I was reading that on Forbes, 40% increase in e-commerce in 2020, 2021 holiday sales. Guess what? Let's get going. Let's get you going. Let's let you sit on the other side and spend Instead of spending all the money, let's have you making money this holiday season so you can get ahead and have that, um, just the, the freedom of not being weighed down by those chains where every single decision, you have to go check your finances. We're done with that life. Let's walk in, step in, serve people at our highest, our absolute highest ability and live our because I can life. Okay. I hope you love that little bit different than the top 10. <laughs> I was talking about my family and then it turned to what I'm doing in the business. Um, yeah. So I, I, let me go back and say we're starting homeschool. Pray hard. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. It's going to be fun. We're going to let bridges. Um, our oldest daughter, she's 17. Uh, she's actually going to design her own curriculum. Uh, so one of the things that we're having her do is, uh, she's supposed to be taking pre-calc this year. She's like, I don't want to take pre-calc. And I'm like, okay, what do you want to do instead? Uh, so she came to us and said, can I study investing in Bitcoin? And I'm like, Heck yeah. <laughs> she has a little business in Puerto Rico um, and does pretty well with it. And so she's like, mom, what do I do with this money? And I gave her, uh, I Googled the Dave Ramsey investment calculator and she saw the power of investing when she's 17. And so she wants to get into that. So we're going to let our kids do um, a, a little bit more of them leading the content uh, in the direction that they're super interested in right now. And we'll see how that goes. So keep your fingers crossed for us. Uh, happy to, uh, any advice out there, we'll take it. Any <laughs> advice um, we're happy to take as we we do this this journey. So I'll keep you updated on the homeschooling, um, on the goose, um, but we're excited to go back. Oh man, we're excited to go back to Puerto Rico. It's a good place. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your love. Thanks for showing up for you for your customers, for your potential customers, we serve. Bottom line is we serve our hearts out and the money comes. I've seen it over and over and over again. I'm I'm here. I'm here for you. I want to help you serve. Go listen to those past uh, podcast episodes. Let's do this, guys. I'll talk to you next week.